and then he hassles them. You're spies. No, oh, no, no, we're not. You've come to search out this area. No, no, we've got 12 brothers from the land of Canaan, the youngest, etc., etc. We kept him home. I say you're spies. No, no. Finally, the third day, look, uh, I will only uh, ransom you for a man who fears God, line 19. If you're really honest, let one of your brothers stay here. Who volunteers? Reuben again. It's a pro-Reuben story, just like the earlier material was. So he stays, stays behind. But, of course, he's also crying to himself because he's seeing his brothers 24. Um, I don't know about this taking Simeon and had him bound. I, I don't understand what that's all about there. Maybe you can explain that to me, line 24. I don't understand that. Is he keeping Reuben back or Simeon? It looks like he's keeping Simeon back. I guess I guess he's not he's not take, keeping Reuben back. He's keeping Simeon back. Reuben tells his brothers in 22, "Look, didn't I tell you not to wrong the boy, but you didn't listen." 23. And they're speaking their own language, and they didn't know Joseph understood their own language. This is all very real stuff here. This is a very good story, a very, very uh, real story. I guess he decides that Simeon is going to stay back. So they go back and uh, see their father. And Reuben is, so this is definitely in the Reuben hero line of the earlier Joseph material, not of the Judah hero line. Judah was disposed of in that Tamar story. Then Reuben said to his father, line 37 or 36, Simeon is no more, his father says, you're robbing me of my children, and now you want to take Benjamin. I can't bear it. Uh, something about the fact that Reuben says, you can have my two sons if I don't bring him back to you. So anyway, they go back down. Now look. Isn't this Judah now the hero here? 43 3? Swung back again? So we do have some lost material in here, right? He probably says that, doesn't he? Yeah, he goes back and forth here. I'm sorry, it's hard for me to follow as a lecturer, but it, yeah, it goes back. Um, Then Judah is saying, he kept questioning us about ourselves and our kinfolk. Is your father alive? And bring your brother down. And Judah said to his father, well, send the boy with, with me. So now, again, we get the same material, but it's Judah. So this is spliced in, like you were saying. So they find, I don't know who's going to do the talking this time when they get down there. So they go back down and they see Joseph. Uh, you've read all of this, so I don't have to do the whole thing. 29. 43. Look, looking up, that is, he saw his brother Benjamin, his own mother's son, his youngest brother, his real brother. And Jared, Joseph heard out because he was so, so this is really cool, as a tearjerker. I mean, when you read this, you have tears in your eyes. That's how effective the story really is. It's tremendously good writing. And here's another point. The, the, the Egyptians can't eat with the Hebrews. They have a horror of it. That's another indication these are the Hyksos, the, 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 the shepherd kings, the, the people the Egyptians have contempt for because they consider them dirty in terms of living with animals and things like that. They're not uh, you know, highly civilized. They're tribes people. But anyway, Benjamin got big portions from Joseph. So once again, like the Rachel story, Jacob fills their sacks with grain, and uh, he puts a cup in one of them. And uh, he wants to accuse them of taking things. Um, and let's see what's the, finally, it's in Benjamin's sack. And so he keeps, I guess, Benjamin back, I guess. And Judah is now the hero of this story. This is really tough. So I think these are two parallel lines, pretty much alike. 
Slight differences depending on who the hero is supposed to be. The storyteller of the South wants a Judah hero. The storyteller of the North wants a Reuben hero. So uh, Judah said, line 18, 44, look, he talks to um, He's talking to who? Joseph here? I think uh, it's all very mixed up at this point, and I can't follow it. Uh, you can follow it better yourselves. And he tells him how miserable the father will be if, uh, jo if Benjamin isn't allowed to come back. At that point, 45, Joseph can't control his feelings anymore, and he, may, and he reveals himself to his brothers, and they all start crying. I am Joseph. So just like the Esau story, Joseph is not going to take vengeance on it for anything. Is my father really still alive? Come closer. I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Five. Do not feel badly because you sold me. And this is now Eloah's God sent me. Like you said, it's mixes. It, 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 it reverberates back and forth. God sent me before you. That's what Muhammad misses. That that's the whole point of the Joseph story. Joseph was chosen by God to save his people. God sent me before you to preserve your lives. He sent me before you to make sure that our people would have survivors. Go to your father and tell him I am alive and bring everything down and you will live, you will live in the land of Goshen. And you will, 13, understand all the honor I enjoy in Egypt. And he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and he cried. And he kissed all his brothers and so on. And they, everybody is really like the end of the Wookiees in, uh, in uh, uh, you know, Star Wars or something. Everyone's singing and dancing a lot. <laughs> I think this is probably a better story than that. And then um, Jacob says, line 28, I must go and see my son Joseph before I die. He reaches Beersheba 46. He has another one of these visions, a Beersheba story. I guess another shrine story centered around Beersheba. Not much. Just telling him that Joseph will close his eyes. Jo jo Joseph will close his eyes. Anyway, so Jacob's from, we get some genealogy stuff put in here, 8 to 27. And there were 70 members, line 27 of his family. That's the number of, uh, of the Sanhedrin to this day. That's the number of people that go up on the mountain with uh, Moses. That's the number of uh, disciples in Christianity. Seventy is the key number for uh, a, a governing body in the, 